Hi, Dr. Bradshaw here. Today we're going to be talking about doing a metabolomics test, uh, which is a very comprehensive test. It's going to tell you a lot of information about what might be going on with your health. It's a tremendous overall uh, telltale sign of what your health is like. Are you at optimal health or are you not? Blood, urine, and saliva, all done as part of this test. So let's get all the pieces out and make sure that number one, that your kit is complete. All right, on top should be a bag of cups that kind of go separately. We had to add those in with your box, which will also be here. The box is right here. Make sure that your box reads metabolomics. If not, you got the wrong test. Call us, make sure you get the right test uh, or you get the right video for the test you should be doing. If you open it up, let's go through the contents. There's a bunch of stuff in here. We're going to go through it all. You got this. The very first thing you're going to do once you get this box open, you're going to see there's a brick. It's called a freezer brick. You're gonna take that and put it right into the freezer, all right? You're gonna need this to be cold when your stuff gets shipped off. So right away, first thing, put this in the freezer. Done. Next, we're gonna take all these pieces out. We're gonna go through each part, make sure it's all here before you get started, all right? There's a foam box in here. You're gonna need that, this white box. You're gonna keep that, okay? The box that it came in, the metabolomics box, you're gonna keep that. That's gonna go back to the lab. We'll set those aside. You're going to have a FedEx bag here with a label, pre-made label. That you can put aside as well. I'll show you what to do with that at the end with some purple instructions. Put that aside. <clears throat> you'll have an instruction book. We're going to go through this in just a moment. Make sure that's in there. You're going to have three parts to this test. Like we said, we're going to have the urine. There's going to be a urine bag. It has biohazard on it. You're going to take that out. Make sure that it has the following. It'll have a little wipette to wipe off uh, when you need to. There's four tubes, two green, one blue, one black. Make sure you have all of those, okay? You're going to need a pipette to move the urine from the cups, which we gave you, into the pipettes, all right? So make sure you have that pipette. And that's the urine bag. Keep the biohazard bag it came in. You're going to need that. Next. We're going to go through the blood bag. Open that up again, another biohazard bag. Inside of it, you will have a fatty acid blood card. That's where the blood spots will go in those circles. We'll go over that in a moment. The lancets. This is the pokers. This will create the blood spots that you'll need. All right, two of those. And then a little wipe for your little blood spots in your finger when you're done. The last one will be the saliva test. You're going to need these little, two little cotton, long cotton uh, Q-tip, cotton applicators in here. You're going to need that and the paper envelope that those are going to go in. We'll talk about that in just a moment. There's an additional bag. It has a band-aid for after you poke your finger. It's got some alcohol prep pads to wipe your finger. And it also has a silica pad that's going to go in the, uh, the um, blood bag when we're done. So just make sure you have that little bag handy. That will also be helpful. And then finally, labels. These are going to go on the tubes of urine. Okay. In fact, go ahead and pull this out. And on here, it's going to ask you for your date of birth on here. And it's also going to ask you for the date of the collection as well. You're going to write that on here. And each one of these is a little sticker. So if I peel it off, you can see here. Peels off. Okay. And each one of those has a QR code. So that is a sticker. That's a sticker. That's a sticker. You can see there are eight stickers on this sheet. Okay. Each each urine tube will get one of these stickers. Got it? Okay, so there are extras on there. You're not going to use all of them. So just make sure that you have your date of birth, date of the collection, which is when you uh, get your urine and collect it. That's all going to go up. One of those on each tube. Okay, that's important. Next, let's go through the urine. And the test in general. There are some rules before you actually um, begin doing this test. We talked about taking that freezer brick, make sure that's frozen. Uh, make sure that you are in a, a usual diet. Uh, make sure that you don't drink any more than six eight ounce glasses of fluid the day before you do this test. You're going to do all of this in one day. So the day before that one day, you're going to make sure you don't drink more than six eight ounce glasses. That's 48 ounces of water. Okay. Any of fluid for that matter. But if you're a water drinker, obviously. So no more than 48 ounces of fluid the day before the test. Okay. You're going to fast overnight. So if you're going to wake up in the middle of the night, you're not allowed to eat or grab a snack or do anything other than drinking water in the middle of the night, okay? 
Um, if you're collect once you're doing the co collection of the cheek swab that day, you get allowed to brush and floss your teeth, but do not use mouthwash. No mouthwash. You're going to be swabbing inside of your mouth. That will affect the results. Okay. Uh, yep. You're going to uh, collect the urine. You're going to do the cheek swab and you're going to do the blood spot all first thing in the morning. Okay. So, uh, once you're done collecting all of these things, we'll talk about what to do. So let's talk about the urine. So those are the rules before the test. Let's talk about the actual test itself. The urine. Take out a cup. There'll be two of them in there. You really only need one in case you screw up. There are two. Okay? Take one. Put the other one aside. You're going to take that cup, put it right by your nightstand, toilet, whatever. If you get up in the middle of the night, let's say that you're going to, this is a Friday night. Tomorrow being Saturday, you're going to run the test. If you wake up in the middle of the night, going from Friday into Saturday, and you need to urinate, go ahead and put that in the cup. Collect that. That will not be your only collection though, okay? When you wake up again in the morning, so long as you go at least within six hours of waking up, you're going to add that urine to your overnight urine, all in the same cup, okay? You got a lid, shake it up, all right? And then you are going to use the pipette to fill these tubes, okay? So you've got the two green ones up on this, uh, you need to fill it up to the, uh, the top here, and there's a mark on here, the 10 milliliter mark. You can see it maybe right there. It's a 10 milliliter mark right there, okay? So that's from there to there, you need to fill that up, which is why you may need to pee once or twice. Um, as long as it's within the first six hours of waking up, you can add to this urine. Do not put the urine in the tube and fill this one up. Okay, I'll pee later and put the urine in this tube. No, 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 no. You're going to add all your urine up and all of your collection, the big collection, will go separately into each of these tubes, divide it up. All right? That's how it's going to work. I want to be clear about that. But like I said, if you pee in the middle of the night, make sure that ends up in here. And then, of course, after you wake up, and up to six hours afterwards, you can do all of that into here. And then you add into, so up to the 10 milliliter mark here, same thing on this green one here. You will also add uh, the, the urine black one, same thing. You're gonna go up to the top of the label here. You can see what that label is. And by the way, you can actually put in your name and date on this one. Go ahead and do that. It has a label specifically for that. Um, I know we have the, the individual stickers we talked about. Go ahead and you can do it on this one as well separately. And then the blue one, same thing. There's a 10 milliliter mark right there. So all of those will essentially be filled up. If I put them all side by side. They're going to be filled up to about right here with the urine. Okay? All of those to about right there. Once you're done using the pipette, right? Transfer from the cup. Transfer, suction it up, put it in the tube. Put it in the tube, put it in the tube, put it in the tube. All right, then we'll be done with the urine. Discard that, pour it in the toilet, throw this away, throw your pipette away. You're done. We're gonna make sure these are sealed up, nice and nice and tight. Feel free to use the wipe to clean your fingers off if you need to, and then drop those tubes into the biohazard bag. Those are going to go back into your foam box in there. Close up the lid to the freezer. Remember, your freezer pack's already in there. Leave it in there for now. This goes in the freezer too. All right, next thing. Once you're done with that, you're gonna take the cotton swabs. You're gonna open them up. Now, this peels open just like a Band-Aid uh, wrapper would, right? You peel it off in the end, you peel it open, uh, two pieces of paper coming apart, and you'll have the two Q-tips sticking out like this. Do not rip this thing so far open that the two, this whole thing becomes two pieces of paper. You want to leave it, if you open it up, just open it up a little bit so you can get those applicators out. Leave this intact because you're going to slide those long cotton swabs back in here when you're done. All right, that's important. So the other thing is when you open it up, don't put your fingers on the cotton swab part, that little cotton end. You need to use your fingers on the wooden stick to pull it out because your fingers can contaminate that cotton swab and that will affect your results. We don't want that. So you're going to open it up. Grab the wooden part of the stick, pull it out, all right? You're going to open the mouth, aggressively scrape the inside of your mouth. Open it up, put it in, and scrape. You're just going to scrape the inside of the mouth 
in through here on the inside between the teeth and the cheek, all right? Get in there and really swab that for about 30 seconds. You're gonna do it aggressively. You're gonna rotate it. You're gonna slide it up and down. You just wanna get all in there and move that thing around like you're trying to really get it all through that side of your mouth with one applicator, okay? And then you're gonna take it out Take and set it aside. You're basically gonna set it up so that the Q-tip is kind of resting. If this is the Q-tip with that copper and applicator in, you're gonna set it up so that way it's resting. You can see it like this. So the cotton swab is kind of hanging off the end and it's drying. All right, you're gonna let it dry just like that. You don't have to do it on this box. You can do it on anything. Just make sure that you kind of leave it there so it's not resting on anything that can get contaminated. It should be resting in the air. The, wood, the wooden part of the stick should be resting on whatever. Does that make sense? Then take the other stick out of the bag, other side of the mouth. Get in there, scrape all inside there between the teeth and the gum, or the teeth and the cheek. Get all of that area in there inside the cheek. 30 seconds aggressively going up and down, rotate back and forth, get in there, all right? Same thing, take it out, set that pipette. So now you have two of these sitting right there. It needs to dry for 15 minutes. Let it air dry. Don't do anything with it, but just let it air dry and leave it alone. Ideally in a room where you don't have kids or dogs or people running around, it can just lay there and not get contaminated or affected by anybody, all right? And then what you're going to do when that's dry, you're going to put those two cotton tips back into the bag. Slide it back in there, cotton tip down, all right? So if you're open on this end, cotton tips this end right here, you're going to slide that in so it's upside down now in the bag. You took it out. When it came out, it came out like this. Now it's gonna go back in like this. Both of them, side by side. <laughs> Done. Close that up. It's gonna go into the paper envelope, which came with this. Open up one end. Take your bag. Slide your Q-tips in there. Close this envelope up right here. Seal it up. You're done with that, okay? That's also going to go into this box. The metabolomics box, okay? This does not need to be frozen. It just needs to go into that box. All right, so that's step two of the test. And then the last one is poking your finger. So you're gonna take the lancet, you're gonna pop this plastic top off. Once you're in here, this little, there's a little red tip right there. Oh, sorry, you can't really see it, right there. That circle in the middle of that red square is where the poker comes out. You just put your finger on that and you push down, like you're trying to push, a, like that red button's a power button, pushing it on to get the uh, TV to come on. Once you push that down, the poker will come out and hit your finger and create a little blood spot on your finger, okay? So you're gonna take that with that blood spot and you're gonna put one on this circle, that circle, that circle, and that circle. And it should look like, when you're done, it should look like this. Okay, the blood should be within that circle. If it looks like these, that's not good. You got two spots right here and here, but those other circles are only semi-done, okay? They need to be four full circles all the way from one edge of the circle to the other full with blood, okay? If you haven't done that, you haven't done it right. Here's another example of what it should not look like. If it's spotted and kind of missing the circle and multiple dots, then no, no, no. It needs to look like that. Okay, so make sure that you do that. And on the card itself, there's actually a, a spot to put your name and your date. So go ahead and write your name and date on there of this collection. And then you're gonna take that and you're gonna put that back into the biohazard bag. You're gonna take that biohazard bag these came in. You're gonna drop this in here. Uh, oh yeah, excuse me. And that, the other thing I do wanna mention is um, before you put this bag with the blood dots on it back into the biohazard bag, this needs to sit out for 24 hours. So you've got your urine and your saliva collection, they're sitting aside like they are, one in the freezer, one in the box, but this has to air dry for another 24 hours. Then this goes into the biohazard bag, just like this, seal it up. The lancets you can throw away, you don't need those. There's a little wipe there to wipe off your finger with, for the little blood spot you got. And then this goes into the bag as well, the box, excuse me, that your cotton applicators went into, right? So we got our blood spot, applicators, go to the freezer, take out your foam box, 
Put the freezer brick on top of that. Close the foam box. Put the foam box on top of the other samples. And now we're good. Okay, so now we're just about home. All you have to do, once you've done that, oh, I almost forgot, Ooh, almost forgot. Shame on Dr. Bradshaw. Let's go back to that blood test real quick. Let's pull it out. The other thing, after you let the blood test from us dry for 24 hours, once it is dried, you need to put the silica pack. So in here, in this other little baggie that has the Band-Aid, it has the alcohol prep, and it has the silica pad. So the alcohol prep pad, by the way, go ahead and wipe your finger first before you prick it to make sure it's nice and clean. You don't have any sort of bacteria or any sort of uh, whatever, detritus on your finger before you prick it. So use the alcohol pad, wipe it. Then use the lancet. Make your card with your spots. Dry that card for 24 hours. And then there's a silica pack. It's right here. The silica pack needs to go into your blood bag. It just keeps from drying out. So once you get that uh, blood blood spot card in there, put that silica pack in there with it. I almost forgot, I apologize. And they do provide you with a Band-Aid, so in case you need a Band-Aid for your finger, uh, if it's still bleeding, go ahead and use that Band-Aid. That is what goes in the box, along with your cotton swabs, along with your urine tubes. Now we're good. And then you're gonna take that whole thing. I recommend you put a piece of tape over the metabolomics box here to make sure it doesn't pop open. Just one little scotch tape over that to mask it or to hold it down. And then you're gonna take your bot, your uh, FedEx bag. You're gonna put this entire, on one end it opens up, you're gonna take this entire box. You're gonna put it inside the bag. Once you get that in there, it's a little bit of a snug fit, but it will fit. In there, go ahead and take off. There's a little sticky adhesive tape. Peel that off. Seal this up, nice and closed up. And then you're going to take this sticker. It's just one big sticker. This FedEx sticker. You're going to peel that off, and you're going to put that right on the square. You can see right here on the front. There is a square on the front. You're going to put that sticker right there. You're going to peel it off and stick it on right there. Take it to the FedEx Kinkos. There's one at College and Oleander. That's the closest location. Um, if you're not in Wilmington, you'll have to find out. Call your FedEx. Make sure that they uh, handle um, biological materials. Not all of them do. The one here in Wilmington, where we live, College and Oleander, that store does. You can just drop it off um, and make sure that uh, you drop it off on a day that's not before a holiday. So let's say that you got a national holiday on a Friday. So FedEx is going to be closed. Uh, it could be closed on Saturday and Sunday as well. That's a problem because it just sits in FedEx overnight three, for three days. So you need to make sure that it goes out the next day. This label is for an overnight ship. So you need to make sure that the next day is a business day. All right. So you can keep your stuff in your freezer. You can keep your stuff at home. Just know that when it goes to FedEx, it needs to be on a day that the next day is still a business day. So it gets there on time. And that's your test, okay? And then you're set. So you should get the results within two to three weeks if you do this properly. And uh, we look forward to going over the results with you.